Hello and welcome back and that is right finally after a very long time and a lot of people myself included requesting it finally it looks like we're going to be getting M2 NVMe support as storage pools in DSM for Synology NAS. Oh my god okay it's happening everybody stay calm what's the procedure everyone what's the procedure, everyone? What's the procedure? Stay if you don't know what that means, seriously, you may have owned a NAS in the last few years and maybe not known the potential of a certain component that is built into your Synology NAS system. Before we go any further, let's rewind a little bit and sort of back up our claims here. And when the DS923 Plus was officially launched on the 16th of November, uh, so that's yesterday at the time of recording, 2022, um, it was launched with its official product pages, its official database stuff and data sheets and resources and performances, uh, performance reports. And in those pages, it seemed incredibly clear that Synology had not only tested this device with the NVMe SSDs inside uh, that you can install inside, I should say, as an optional um, for their performance, but actually rated them for it as well, stating very clearly in press releases and on the official product pages that these bays can be used for both caching and as storage pools now this is an enormous deal but why first and foremost is it a big deal well let me explain with these devices if you already know this by the way fast forward like two minutes but the reason it's such a such a big deal is because when the very first Synology disk stations arrived with M2 NVMe bays on the base, and that was the DS918+, Plus, everyone was chuffed to bits. These bays allowed you to not only install um, four bays of traditional hard drives, which are slower, has to be said, but more cost effective in terms of price per terabyte, and um, can actually give you much larger capacity, although they are slower. M2 NVMe's, which are more expensive and lower in capacity generally, give you performance in the thousands of megabytes per second whereas hard drives give you something like 160 to 250 megabytes per second on a good day so consequently everyone was chuffed to bits but then Synology stated that these bays that were in the base of a number of their desktop systems like this one those bays could only be used for caching, read-write caching, which is beneficial in its own way. Write caching is beneficial when data is being written to the system and the data goes onto the SSD and in the back end, it's passed over to the hard drive RAID array. In read caching, it's when more frequently accessed smaller IO type data is copied over to the SSDs and therefore in future, when more frequent accesses and requests are made, that data is gleamed from the SSD and not the slower hard drives, thereby lowering latency and increasing performance but that's not enough and the reason this is a big deal is because if you had gone out and spent a few hundred nicker on an SSD like these that can give you performance the last thing you want it doing is just used for caching you want raw storage and in the last few years we've seen several other NAS brands QNAP, Acer Store and even TerraMaster all produce uh, the ability to have these M2 NVMe base for both caching and and for raw storage pools. So now, finally, Synology is taking the leap and including this. But why now? What's changed? And when do we think we're going to see this feature? Well, first and foremost, I would say why now? Because of DSM 7.2. When DSM 7.2 was first provisionally uh, revealed at the Synology 2023 and Beyond event at the end of October, they talked about a number of different features that were being introduced on that platform. They talked about um, uh, volume level encryption, something we've been waiting for for a while. Talked about read once, read many access and improve performance and uh, kind of connectivity on a number of their first party applications. Now, Synology is going big a lot uh, quite big on a lot of their uh, kind of hybrid cloud solutions a lot of the c2 stuff a lot of the bare metal versus uh, cloud storage providers out there and one of the big ways to do this is with fabric type storage and dual hard drive and ssd type storage there now that to do that, their flash station systems, which are all pretty much exclusively either SAS or I know, uh, SATA, or I know there are some of their systems that are SAS slash SATA, they're all fair and well, but you're still not going to get the sheer performance level that NVMe can give you without enabling those bays as raw storage pools. Now, another thing about this is to do with the benefits of M2 NVMe's. Now, although they are beneficial as caching bays, M2 NVMe's both uh, both provide exceedingly good performance internally and externally. Let me explain. 
when you run apps or even DSM from the slower hard drives, you're still, even with a RAID and you've got multiple drives all adding and they don't necessarily multiply, you know, directly. You normally get an increase of around 1 to 250 megabytes per second, depending on the drive, as you add more drives to consistent RAID arrays, again, RAID dependent. But the internal performance benefits of a big old RAID array will never match that of running uh, the DSM and key applications from an M2 NVMe for two reasons. One, obviously that throughput I just mentioned, the M2 NVMEs provide, but also the IOPS, very important. SSDs provide a level of IOPS, that's individual input outputs per second, versus hard drives that is intimate. Like hard drives get into the tens of thousands if they're lucky, SSDs can break into the millions which again, you are gonna to have to break into the PCIe Gen 4 bracket, but that option is there. So frankly, it's about bloody time we've seen M2 NVMEs being usable as raw storage pools on uh, the newer generation of Synology systems. However, why now and what about the future of it and compatibility? Now, the fact that this was uh, first kind of revealed within the DS923 is by no means an accident. Not only because that system has M2 NVMe SSD base, but also because its CPU, the AMD embedded Ryzen the R1600, is a Gen 3 architecture CPU. That is, that it's um, uh, PCI lanes, it's chipset, whatever you want to refer to it as within the grand, grander scheme of the chassis is PCIe Gen 3, whereas its predecessor, the 920, and a number of other NASs that came before it are Gen 2 based. It's only been in the last year, year and a half, that we've seen more and more systems arriving from Synology that are exclusively Gen 3. What's the difference? Well, with PCIe Gen, and again, this is a huge oversimplification, but it makes it much easier to explain. With M2 NVMEs, they run on PCI architecture. You know that slot that you stick graphics cards in and stuff like that? That's a PCI slot. This is sort of like that, but in terms of the architecture. What I'm talking about is the lanes, them, uh, the actual backend lane management. Gen 2 PCI lanes give you 500 megabytes per second. We're not going to factor in dual lane and stuff like that, but 500 megabytes per second. Gen 3 gives you 1,000 megabytes per second. That little number you see on the end of a PCI slot that's times 1, times 2, times 4, times 8, times 16, that is just that number in megabytes per second multiplied. So, for example, the DS920, which has two slots at the bottom there, these are Gen 2 based, and I believe they are Gen 2 times 4. The result is that you'd only get at Gen 2 times 4, 2,000 megs per second on those slots. And even then, if you run a Gen 3 drive, you're still going to be limited to Gen 2 speeds anyway. So I can understand, sort of, and I'll get to that later on, why they didn't enable it then. But the newer generation systems all being Gen 3, and the slots on the likes of the 1522 and the 923 are Gen 3 times 4. Four. Now that is really, really important because these slots allow you to get the full bandwidth available. So that means that the Gen 3 SSDs that are in the market right now, these all arrive at Gen 3 times 4 or Gen 4 for some of the newer generation. So the newer generation Gen 3 Synology NAS systems have now got that bandwidth and architecture to give you full, uh, of much fuller potential saturation with those SSDs. Now, Bear in mind, not all Synology systems are going to have this feature enabled. I think there are several provisos that, although we're still waiting for official confirmation on this and hopefully should have it, and I'll update the article in the description, there are some big question marks right now. The first one, as I've already sort of touched on there, is what about the old gen? What if you own a 920, a 720? All of these systems that have already come out that have got M2 NVMe slots. Well, I'm willing to bet any of them in the 20 plus series that were the disk station 2 or 4 bay, they're not going to have it. And I include the 420 in that because they are Gen 2 systems. And I reckon Synology will not provide that uh, service to those systems because of a much narrower bandwidth that will potentially bottleneck the SSDs. Again, that might even apply to the likes of the 1522 as well. Because as much as I'm singing it being a Gen 3 system, <clears throat> We need to know that those PCIe slots are Gen 3 times 4. I don't 100% know that. What we do know about those slots that are inside is even though they're Gen 3, this is a 5 base system, so they've had to allocate some of the PCI lane to the CPU and the chipset to that extra bay. This even has that 10G and it has four LAN ports there. So that 
P the PCI lanes may have been too spread out to make the M2 NVMe slot on this system, Gen 3 times 4 So there's no guarantee that even the 1522 will be supported by this. The next big question mark for a lot of users is <clears throat> the actual official compatibility and support of this feature for most users. Say you bought a 923, what if it is the case that you can only use Synology drives? Now, if you look at the official 93 pages, what they state is the performance benchmarks they provide and the little disclaimer that they point you towards only list the Synology range of SSDC, SNV3400. What that means is if you're, if you're restricted to only Synology drives to use this service, and we've had no indication of that, by the way, that's pure hypothesis, if that is the case, because Synology sort of have form in places, these drives are not perfect NVMe SSDs. They're pretty good for caching. They've got a good durability rating. They have a read factor. I believe the read rating of sequential read was uh, a little over 3,000 megabytes per second. But sequential write was not good. It was like 800 to 1,000 megs, which as an external connection, if you're going to use 10 GBE, you're mostly okay, although you are bridging kind of an edge point there. But if you were going to run multiple 10 GBE ports or internally you wanted to use write speed performance, these are not the best SSDs in the market for that. Indeed, WD Black, Seagate, Iron Wolf, Seagate Fire Cuda, WD's own Red series in the SN700. All of these SSDs in M2 NVMe form have got much higher write performance speeds and equal, if not better, read performance speeds to Synology SSDs. So a lot of us are wondering whether Synology are going to introduce this feature in, P in DSM 7.2, but restrict it to using their only their own SSDs, which I think would be really annoying. Now, it's worth highlighting that you can currently enable these slots as M2 NVMe storage pools if you choose, but you, we can either use some patches via GitHub that have been created, or you can tap in via SSH and modify it that way. But by doing that, you run a couple of risks. Number one, you never know whether a new firmware update is going to kick this feature and ruin your storage array, uh, your NVMe SSD storage pool array. Second big problem is if they do roll out this as an official 7.2 patch, there's no guaranteeing that that in itself as a wider spread large storage upgrade won't knacker your existing unofficial M2 NVMe storage pool. So if you're already using a patch like that, be careful when going for your updates. The last question that's floating in the air about this, of course, are things like upgrade cards. Because there are some NAS systems out there, such as the DS1621 XS Plus, that has M2 NVMe slots, but also rack mounts and other devices that are Gen 3, uh, or desktop devices like the DS2422 Plus, that don't have M2 NVMe slots by default, but do have PCIe Gen 3 times 8 upgrade slots, and that's for cards like this, the E10G 20T1, or the M2D 220 M2 NVMe upgrade cards. Will you be able to put SSDs on these cards, pop them inside the system, and still be able to use those for storage pools? We simply don't know right now. All we know is that NVMe SSD storage pools are coming to the Synology NAS platform, and almost certainly it's going to arrive at Gen 3 and above systems, although, again, pinch of salt right there. And I will keep you updated throughout as we learn more about this. I just really wanted to share this with you and the implications, good and possibly bad for some users, on um, having this great new feature in DSM 7.2. Do let me know what you guys think in the comments. Again, full article linked in the description. I will be updating as more information arrives. If you want to learn more, click subscribe, click like if you've enjoyed the video. It really helps me out. If you want to have some free advice to help you with your data storage setup, Synology or otherwise, use the free advice section linked in the description. And if you want even more advice from the community at large, use the Ask Nest Appear support forum as well. Final thing, if this video has helped you or any of my videos have helped you, and if you were planning to buy from Amazon anyway, if those two things are true, then do use the links in the description to take you to Amazon to buy your products. It doesn't cost you anything extra, and anything you buy from there results in a small little kickback coming to us here at NAS Compares, me and Eddie, and it helps us to continue doing what we do. Other than that, thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you next time.